Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Turn Back the Clock Tuesday. Let me silence that real quick. <laughs> Turn Back the Clock Tuesday, the bi-monthly series. Uh, and tonight we are heading back to 1987 with a box of tops with a distinguishable wood grain border that kind of rivals 1962 tops. This is a sealed box, which is kind of odd because... Uh, to my knowledge, these boxes were never sealed, so hopefully some Mr. Belvedere-looking shop owner did not tear into these long, long ago and pull out all the key cards that we're looking for tonight, like the rookie cards of Barry Bonds and Bo Jackson, Barry Larkin, Will Clark, of course, Ruben Sierra, Jamie Moyer. There's quite a few in here, but the big ones we're looking for, obviously, Bo Jackson, Larkin, uh, Will Clark, and Barry Bonds. Factory sealed product. And we have Dave Rigetti on the top of this box. These boxes have really shot up over the last year with the uh, the wax box craze that has taken the entire world by storm. Before you could get these boxes for like under 20 bucks, now it seems like they're actively selling for like 50 to $60 a box. And uh, back in 1987, these were 40 cents a pack. We have 17 cards per pack. And... Um, we're going to get right down to it, so I want to thank you guys all for being here. And maybe we'll even try some gum and see how that tastes. But top left, Craig B. of Craig B. Cards is up first. Everyone has nine packs per stack. And we'll check out the bottom box cards a little bit later. Joe's Card Corral, Paul L. Ripping for Ripkins. Thank you guys all for being here. Joe's Card Corral is mentioning yak packs, I see. I have a funny story about that. I almost pulled the trigger on a nice little lot of yak packs yesterday. $16 per box, which I thought was kind of reasonable. And um, I had them in my cart, and then I noticed today the guy raised the price up to 30 again. So I'm not really sure why I did that when no one bought them for 16 Now they are 30 so I promptly took them out of my cart. But uh, maybe if they go down again, we'll get those, and we'll rip those sometime soon and share in the horror that is Yak Packs. But nine packs in the first stack for Craig B. 87 tops. So far, so good. It's a pretty good sign there. I have not had good luck with 87 tops. As you've seen from recent subscription box videos and everything else, I haven't been able to pull any of these iconic rookie cards at all. But right off the bat, that gum is really cemented on there. I'm not going to try that right now and slop into the microphone, but Craig B, good luck to you. I know you're looking for a Bo Jackson rookie card, so hopefully we can grant you one of those tonight, man. Right off the bat, we have Mariners leaders. Definitely some funny photos in here. As far as error cards go, there are a few, uh, so maybe we'll see those tonight too. Tom Seaver, right off the bat, is a good sign. Sean Dunstan, and the, the what a trip to spring training in 1988, which we'll see in every single pack. And uh, old Davy Lopes and that very identifiable handlebar mustache, Jimmy Williams. Vaughn Hayes, who we absolutely hated a couple years later. Steve Sachs and all his aggression coming out there. Every other car before 1987 literally looked like he was in tears. So that is interesting. Joe's card corral says Mariners leaders in 1987. <laughs> of course, we can never forget about the... Uh, Memorable 1990 Tops rip where we found some 1987 Tops inserts in one of the packs. I think there was like five to be exact. Pete Incavillier rookie card is also in here. It was definitely a big one back in the day. So quite a few. Hopefully we see some of them. Mike Fitz, Fitzgerald. 792 card set. Steve Bouchel never liked him, even though he played for the Buccos several years later. <laughs> Boom slangs in the house. His cheech mustache. They're definitely uh, very resemblant of Cheech Marin. Tommy John, Floyd Rayford in that pack. Johnny Ray, who had uh, has the pretty, very rare, I should say, 87 opening day error card, which fetches a pretty penny to this day. Definitely one I've had on my radar for quite a while, but raw, they seem to sell for upwards of a thousand bucks. Brent's card breaks in the house. Z87 Tops, my favorite. Brent, thank you for being here, man. I got a package from you a couple days ago and I'm blown away by it. Brent actually sent me a Barry Bonds 87 Fleer rookie and some others and some packs as well of 91 Tops. Brent, thank you again, man. 
That was very, very cool of you. We are off to a pretty rough start so far. Tom Foley, Raphael Palmero. That's a rookie card that I failed to mention in the beginning of the video. That's his rookie. I was real stoked on that card when I was a kid back in the 90s. A PED guy, but uh, still uh, one of the rookies I guess we're looking for in here. BJ Serhoff was a big one back in the late 80s. Todd Burrell, Gold Cup, and Ron Kittle. His rookies were pretty valuable in the early 80s. His rookie car was 83 Fleer. Mikey G is in the house. It's my first rip. Let's do this. Mikey G, thanks, man. Mikey G has a stack coming up later on in this break. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate that. Hopefully, I can pull you some nice rookies. And Dunn Rum and Ranch. I actually still have a package for you, man. So if you want to get a hold of me, it's been sitting uh, around for about two months now. You already paid for the cards. We just need to get a proper address for you and cover the shipping costs, and I'll send those out to you ASAP. If you want to send me an email, my email is down below in the description. It's Rob Deer. <laughs> Interesting pose of him. Reggie Williams foaming at the mouth. Never noticed that one before, but uh, pretty creeped out by that. Burt Belylevin. Rangers leaders. It's Bobby Witt, Dave Concepcion. It's like he is... Smacking Herm Winningham on his rear end. It's kind of a questionable card. And of course, everyone's favorite, the very pissed off antics of Sparky Anderson. <laughs> Ed Lynch. <laughs> the multiple chins that have spawned. Richard Jackson turned back the clock. And Juan Berenger, another guy that I did not like as a kid, and I don't know why. Too many of those like that. Steve Brule, what is happening, man? Yeah, Ed Lynch and his quadruple chin. Somewhere around there. I lost count. Gum definitely looks uh, kind of tasty. But uh, I'm going to try it just yet. I am tempted. Greg Walker. Bill Wegman. There's Puckett. Nice one. Pretty decently centered left to right. But top to bottom is no doubt off. Dave Bergman. Tom Bernanski. Hopefully we see the uh, the Greg Brock card that used to really creep me out as a kid. There's like a, like a palm tree or something in the background, but I always thought it was his actual hair. <laughs> Brent's car breaks it. Did you eat the, the gum in 91 Tops? I definitely did, man. Those like cello pack wrappers. we got Ripken on the back of this next pack. Donald Blomdahl, what is going on, man? Steve Brule, appreciate that, man. No sign of any rookies yet. we got four more packs left to go through in the first stack. Tim Wallach, Jeff Sellers, Oil Can Boyd, Daryl Evans, Missing a Neck, Tom Brookins, he actually has an error card, 89 Fleer, it's kind of a cool one. Clemens, there are some error all-star cards, Missing the TM, that's not one of them, though. Honeycutt, Terry Francona, Steve Lyons having the time of his life in the dugout, and there is that Ripken. So, I've been trying to rip boxes that are affordable for everyone this current boom going on and like i said before to use to those of you that missed the beginning of the stream these are about 50 to 60 dollars a box now if you buy them on ebay might be able to find them for a little less at the antique malls and stuff but that might be kind of doubtful because everything i've been seeing in antique malls lately is is absolutely absurd that's why you haven't seen a weekend recap in a while because prices are out of control right now and speaking of greg brock there is that crazy car that used to creep me the hell out as a kid with the tree in the background, I literally used to think that was his hair. <laughs> his 80s heavy metal hair. Flapping in the wind. Tim Hollitz, Ted Power. Wally Backman. Candy Maldonado looking super pissed off. Presley. Still no sign of any rookies. I can't remember what the precursor is for Barry Bonds. Obviously, is rubbing out. The uh, And George Bell with the TM. Keith Moreland. But uh, two packs left. Bo Jackson and Barry Bonds both have rookie cards or extended rookie cards in 86 trade. Also, John Crook has a rookie card in here as well. But, of course, he has the horribly sweat-stained hat rookie in 86 trade. Jim Sunburn, there's Clemens. Decent one there. Clemens' third-year card. Ray Knight. <laughs> Fred Tolliver just looks afraid of life on that card. Durham, Don Robinson... His dad's stash. There's Alan Trammell. 
Sherry Hairston, Mike Greenwell made quite a name for himself in the late 80s. And Bob Nepper leading us to the final pack. No Sandbergs either yet for Craig B. VA Beach Collectibles is the indicator card for Bonds or Jerry Reed. Frank Pastore, Giants team card. Good to know, man. Thanks for that info. I was thinking it was Mike Diaz for some reason. I can't remember. I haven't opened 87 tops in quite a while. Jim Leela manager card. I would have been stoked on that back in the day. Vance Law would not have been stoked on that. would have been pissed off and probably ran that over with my bike or something. Jeffrey Leonard. <laughs> Pretty goofy look on his face. Joe Necro. And the last, the final pack of the first stack. Gaetti, Kevin Mitchell. That was definitely a decent card back then, too. Roy Lee Jackson. Ontiveros. Pretty dorky car of Scott Geralt's. Floyd Bannister ends the first stack. No Bo Jackson for Craig B. I am sorry, Craig. We tried. Moving right along to Corey in the top right. No oh, Corey's in here. Hoping for a PSA 10 Ripken, which I'm, I don't know if he has that one or not. But good luck to you, Corey. Let's find you that. PSA 10 Ripken. So we have two of it. Surprised Leland wasn't smoking. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing. Getting down to it. Steve Balboni is going to herald in Corey's stack. Harry chested Bob Stanley. McCaskill, Davey Johnson, Woody Herzog. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob Boone looks terrified. No sign of any of the big rookies. Davey Lips, record breaker. And Ozzy Virgil in the first pack. Carl Best, another Mandela effect. <laughs> Paul says, I've been experiencing a lot of Mandela effects lately. I'm trying to think of the most recent one, but it had me really weirded out for like an entire day. That is the one true Steve Brule Fall Creek. <laughs> Sammy Stewart and the giant dip in. Bobby Valentine. Mike Brown, Mike Schmidt, not an error card. TM is present there. Mitch Williams, I feel like I was pretty stoked on that card at one point as a kid. Dave Henderson and Dave LaPointe. Friends card break says, first pack I opened as a kid was 73 tops. That's pretty sweet, man. Eric says the first pack he ever opened was 89 tops. I can't remember what mine was. I feel like it was probably those League Leaders cards from like 88 or 89. Somewhere in there. My memory is pretty crap as far as that goes. Mario Soto, Julio Franco. Craig B. Cards says, thanks for the rip. 87 Tops is still being a real D-bag to me. Craig B. Cards, thank you, man. Corey, please post a link to Craig B. And let's get him to 300 subs. Craig just posted a video. I think it was like, was it yesterday or the day before? So check out Craig B. Cards if you have not already. It's Tim Raines, Ozzie Gian second year card. Appreciate that, Craig. 87 tops will forever be a D bag to me. There's Phil Necro this time around. Miscut pretty bad. Devon White, that's actually his rookie card. And Roberto Clemente, I love this card. His original 72 tops. Found that at a card show a couple years ago for five bucks. It's in pretty good condition. Better condition than this card as far as the centering goes. George Brett, Royals leaders, and Eric Shaw ends the that pack for Corey. I know Corey has a vendetta against 87 tops, as well as I do. Just have not had luck in a long time. Daryl Miller leading off this pack. Mike Scott had some pretty awesome years in the 80s. Fred Lynn, but still no sign of any rookies. It is a big set, like I said, 792 cards. Jeff Robinson, dorky Daryl Porter, Rudy Law, Roger Craig, Slap a $100 price tag on that and put that at the flea market. And it will sit there for years and drive people like myself crazy as to why that is the price tag on it. Speaking of that and absurd card prices, I saw the Ken Hill 89 Donruss again this weekend at the Antique Mall. <laughs> I chuckle every time I see it. You can't help but chuckle. Sid Bream, Lonnie Smith, Raphael Belliard, who was absolutely awful, Charlie Huff, that wood grade border just does not suit him well. Needs to be, I don't know, some sort of 
ancient Neolithic stones. Left Behind Time says, thank you for going live. Needed distraction from work. Find the Frank. Left Behind Times, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you're able to tune in from work, man. It's so freaking awesome. Check out Left Behind Times. Corey can post and link to his channel if he has good service. And give him a sub. He just posted a video it wasn't too long ago. It was about a week ago, I believe. And check out his videos of urban exploration. Very, very interesting and cool stuff. we got Paul Molitor, Donnie Baseball, the TM, and Puckett back-to-back. -back. So some stars are coming out now. Gorman Thomas. Gene Walter and his creepy little scum stash. And Kenny Landro for Paul L. An old omen that we have since forgotten about. Acid plus baseball seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Not much of a ball player. Why did the border on the Charlie Huff look a hell of a lot lighter than the other cards? I was noticing that too, man. What was up with that? That was some sort of... Yeah, that's, like that's crazy. Some sort of... Omen right there. Very, very weird. Boom Slang with a link to Left Behind Times. Please check that out. Give him a sub. There's Wade Boggs. Appreciate all you guys being here. Larry McWilliams and that wild leg kick. Maury Wills, Jack Morris, Lance Parrish. And there's a Yaz. Turn back the clock. Mark Bailey and Chet Lemon. It's a, it's a Huff parallel. Three packs for Corey. I'm sure he is absolutely furious right now. Fitzy says, what rookie when you were a kid were you most excited about? You had all the rookie cards. Mine was Phil Plantier. Yeah, definitely like Todd Zeal. I don't know which one I was most excited about. There's def definitely different stages of that. Like in 97, it was Jose Cruz Jr. In 95, it was Krim Garcia. <laughs> 91 was Phil Plantier and probably Bob Wickman. Mike Diaz. Um, yeah, nineteen ninety was Kevin Moss. The very disgusting looks of Zane Smith that will forever haunt me. It looks like a Will Clark rookie card. Finally, one of them is gonna show up for us. Will Clark rookie in Corey's stack. It's an iconic card, and I know a lot of people think that he deserves more Hall of Fame consideration. But uh finally one shows up. Clark rookie. I don't know what a PSA 10 of that one would go for. Maybe like around like 70 or 80 bucks. Could be a little bit more. Carl Willis looks super pissed off. Do not run into him in a dark alley because he will win. Joe's card crosses. I heard John talk about one Ace of Edo a lot. Yeah, I definitely remember that stage. Definitely remember that. Corey says, wood grain border is reminiscent of all the panels in the bedrooms of the houses we grew up back in the 80s. I, that's definitely true, man. And what, I don't know some of our grandparents and family members probably still have wood paneling, which I love it just because of the, it's a sign of the time. There's Pete Rose. Very nice off center, but still Pete Rose. Nonetheless, Tommy Lasorda, Rick Russell, <laughs> Chuck Tanner. <laughs> Looks like he belongs in fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Dave Stapleton. There's no, Oh, look at that. Corey got the Bo Jackson rookie finally showed up. Very, very nice. The iconic rookie of Bo himself. Beautiful. And he was spared the gum stain. I love 87 Tops, too, and these facts that they have on this date. Sandy Koufax struck out the side on nine pitches. Very cool. And then just random info, but awesome. Future Stars, Bo Jackson. I love that Future Stars. Wish they would have done away with that. It's pretty sweet. Or changed the design of it, at least. Rick Sutcliffe. Sparky Anderson, of course, in everybody else's faces, pissed off and just berating people. Clemens, 86 record breaker. I feel like that's there's an error card. Maybe it's even corrected of that same one. <laughs> Sparky Anderson just, <laughs> just never had a good day. I don't know, but uh, the hits should be going in this screw down case just to make it like 1987 all over again. Criterion Racers in the house says, please plug in your phone before my stack. Lee, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate the reminder, man. My phone has a habit of dying. I, it, I, think, it's on, I think it was on like 70% when we started, so I think I'm good. Check out Lee, Criterion Racer. Just hit a little over 100 subs. Just posted a recent video, too. Um, what was it, a day or two ago? 
uh, opening some newer product. He hit pretty big at Walmart. Also opening a package from me and some other stuff as well. So check out Lee Criterium Racer. Give him a sub. Bill Schroeder. Floyd Van Tien in the house says, I got a story for you of how I got a Griffey rookie. David, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lanyard always looks so pissed in that card. Corey, if you could post a link to Floyd Van Tien's other channel too, get some traffic over to him. I definitely would like to hear that Griffey rookie story. Looks like we got a Jane Moyer rookie card coming up here too. Moyer rookie, he pitched for absolutely ever. Not a high dollar card by any means. You probably find that in 10 cent or even quarter bin at card shows and whatnot, but still a nice rookie to have. You collect rookie cards or prominent rookie cards like myself. There's Eddie Murray. Dave Magadan, this was a big one back in the late 80s. Definitely one that i pretty sure I had and was pretty stoked on as well. Jose Cruz Sr. And Mickey Brantley. Corey says, nice Bo Jackson. I know I'm, I'm lagging way behind. That is pretty far back there. Was that like five minutes ago? Corey Stack is finished on the Moyer Rookie. And we move on to Lee, one of his favorite products ever. 87 tops. I know Lee is sitting on a stronghold of three of these boxes for himself. I had, I did have two. I started sending packs off to people at random that I decided to just use one for a rip. So now I have like, I don't know, maybe a half a box. But um, good luck to you, Lee, man. I know it's, I know you really like this product. I hope we find you something good. 50 says, what car as a kid did you spend a fortune trying to pull yourself? Mine was Brian Taylor, 92 tops. Oh, geez. I can't remember. This is definitely Bowman related, I'm sure. But uh, I never really spent a whole lot of money when I was a kid, like, as far as buying expensive packs. I just definitely just bought a ton of, like, score and, like, tops. Whatever I get my hands on that was, I can get the most quantity for, for my buck. There's Kelly Gruber. Tewksbury. Definitely used to buy a lot of score. I kind of regret it now because I bought a ton of, like, 91 and 92 score. And look at those sets. Brett Saberhagen. But 87 Tops is one of the most overproduced sets of all time. And heralded in the junk wax era. Eric Davis is big name around this time. Dwight Evans record breaker. Cecil Cooper and Kelly Downs. <laughs> 91 score. I, I hate 91 score. I have to say it. I don't hate very many baseball cards, but I freaking hate that set. It's one of the first sets I owned as a kid, along with like 89 score and 90 Fleer. But I just freaking hate how they just kept switching back and forth with the colors. Like, I hate looking through it now. It, like, makes me angry. Like, it gives me a, a damn migraine. I feel like when I have a seizure going through it. It's just not a good set. I don't know what they were thinking whenever they designed that. Billy Hatcher, Floyd Van Tien says, 87 tops would be better if they made it <laughs> in 1995. Thank you, Floyd Van. I appreciate that. Rance Mullenix having the time of his life. Not looking as dorky there but we know that would change in the coming years. I definitely agree with you. They should have just held off and done it in 95 instead. Bruce Hurst. Mario Wills again, the same collation as the Junk Wax era is most notable for. Nacho Vidal says, well, the Tiffany only, uh, only available as a set. The Tiffany were only in set form. That is it. The glossy cards were only in rack packs. Exclusive to those. There's rappers freaking falling everywhere. This pack is coming open too easily. But, I mean, I am pretty hopeful for this box. I mean, we found a Bo Jackson rookie already. If somebody searched this box years ago, they would have taken that out. No doubt about it. So, there is hope for a Bonds. We found a Will Clark rookie already. Larkin rookie. <laughs> Creepy card there. Alan says, hello, I enjoy, I enjoy watching your videos. You started collecting it. Alan, welcome, man. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Mariana Duncan running for his life. Mike Felder, Jack Clark caught in a rundown. John Cangelosi just always looks so cocky. Strawberry and Gary Carter. It's a cool Mets leaders card. Alejandro Pena. Pete Incavilla, rookie card. I'm sure every single person struggled with pronouncing his name as kids. Pete Incavilla. Justin says, laugh out loud that Bob Melvin he just pulled. I pulled one in the first stream I did pulling cards and someone claimed he was their uncle and he would get drunk at Thanksgiving at their house. He looks like that drunk uncle. There's Henderson. 
He definitely has that look. Mike Laga just looks like his entire face and body is photoshopped. Charlie Kerfeld and Randy Neiman, who originally pitched for the Pirates, searched it for all the crooks. <laughs> Old Uncle Bob, he's doing it again. He is at it again. He's drunk off eggnog. He's making a complete ass out of himself. Got six packs left for Katerium Racer. Dykstra, second year card for him. Specky Lavalier, Strawberry, nice one. Jim Clancy, there's no uh, good signs in the background. I've really been looking lately to try to find alcohol and tobacco signs in the backgrounds of cards. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> there's a lot more than you think. Gary Carter, all-star card. Tom Candy Audi, and it is official that Unibrow has connected. I was a little bit iffy at first, but um, it is completely connected and it has bridged the gap. Apparently, unibrows were in style back in the 80s because it seems like almost everyone had one. Wade Boggs, all-star card. John Smoltz, 98, 98 upper deck has a Budweiser sign. I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I've definitely been finding more and more of those. They made a huge deal about Randy Johnson's Marlboro sign in the background, but there are so many that uh, they just let slide. And I'm collecting them because they're freaking awesome. Bruce Benedict, Greg Harris, Paul Zuvella. I don't remember him at all. He played for quite a few years, though, but he does play the piano and the drums, and he's an avid movie watcher and chess player. So don't F with him. Herm Winningham, Matt Young, Bip Roberts. His rookie card is actually an 86 update set, sets. Tim Burke. And Yaz, turn back the clock again. Checklist card. Mark Bailey. Lemon. Ruben Sierra. I guess by today's standards, you consider that a rookie card, but uh, he does have a rookie in the regular base set. This is a subset card. Willie Randolph really tore it up his early years. And Tom Kelly. Maybe he jammed with Piazza at some point. Dead Grateful says, yeah, very possible. Dan Quisenberry enjoys reading in computers. Old quiz. Look at that. On the very back of the pack. Saved from the gum stain. Oh, man. But the wax stain got it. Lee. Oh, man. Ed Hearn. That freaking sucks. The very back of the pack. Let's build up the suspense here. We know it's, know it's coming. Doug Drabeck. I believe that's actually his rookie card. Jose Uribe, Don Slot, Dave Dravecki, whose career ended tragically. He used to be pumped on him. Tony Pena had a hell of an arm. Ed Hearn. Floyd Fantien says, Some lady came to my LCS yesterday and poured out a bag of cards on his counters. He was already pissed off and offered 20 bucks. And then I walked in. He was so pissed off, he sold them to me for 25 bucks. Floyd fan, thank you very much for that, David. I appreciate it. You let us know what you got in there. Is that how you got? Came upon the Griffey rookie, and which one was it? From 89. Is it the upper deck rookie? Because that'd be absolutely crazy. That for 25 bucks by itself is a freaking outright steal. Darnell Coles. And here it is. Barry Bonds rookie card. Very nice. I love that card. As most of you probably know, my brother Eric of Jab's family has... Literally 500 of this card. <laughs> Probably, I'm not kidding. Probably, he might even have more than that. Bonds, rookie. Love it. Iconic rookie card. And, of course, don't get scanned by people selling this as an error card because of the three scratched off. It is not an error. Every single one of these cards has that text missing. Or print missing, I should say. But this one does have a wax stain on it. But still, very cool that he showed up in this box. You never know with something like this that is resealed. Love that card. Very, very nice. Dave M says, I got two Griffey Bowman rookies in my LCS for a buck each. That's freaking awesome. Paul also says, we, we need another 94 Bowman break soon. Got to see John Hudak again soon. I bought a 4,000 count box over the weekend, and there's a John Hudak minor league card in it. <laughs> I put it off to the side so that I could pull it out. Floyd Fan TN, thank you very much, man. Very, very nice of you. Uh, you have to let us know what else you got in there. And I have not sent out your auction cards yet. I was trying to compile uh, some more of your some more Robin Younts and PC guys for you before I send it off to you. Jim Rice, if Corey could please post a link to Floyd Fan's other channel. 
You got the Fleer Griffey rookie, actually. The 87 Tops Bonds, Messi 85 Fleer Gwynn, 94 Pinnacle Bow Jackson, Blue Angels. That's still awesome, though, man. Regardless, I love those random boxes, especially for 25 bucks. You can't beat that. There's a George Brett, Goose Gossage. So, definitely seeing some nice names in here. Tony Gwynn <laughs> looks completely unenthused there. Lansford, John Henry Johnson. Ken Howe, Tim Piznarski, which I don't remember him. I don't know if he was really around very long. I would not bet on it in Bill Dolly. The Goose is definitely cheesing. Jason Easterling, what's happening, man? Two packs left for Lee. And we got the Barry Bonds, Bo Jackson, Will Clark, Jane Moyer. No Larkin yet. That's really about it. Not going to be a glutton. We got a Nolan Ryan coming up in this pack. John Henry Jingleheimer Schmidt. Horrible cut on Russ Mormon. David Getty, who earned himself the spotlight on top of the box. Mel Hall without the poop stain for Joe's card career. Randy Myers. Junior Ortiz, who I'm pretty sure was my favorite player for I don't know why, but he has a unibrow there. We have to make note of that. Vita Blue. Terry Pendleton. And there is a Nolan Ryan. Nice one there. Dennis Rasmussen. Henry Cotto. <laughs> Juan Beniquez. <laughs> Juan has played winter ball the past 16 years. Well, maybe flip that card over. Um, Ken Knapsock. He posted a new ASMR baseball card video. I was pumped. I had to wait two months for a new one. And he opens 87 tops. And there's a lightning bug on the screen. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I assure you there is not there are not bugs just all through my house, but uh, it might seem that way because I think the last auction there was an ant crawling across the screen. Now there's a, light, a lightning bug. Not sure what's going on with that, but um, I assure you that's not the case. He actually pointed this out on this one Beniquez. He opens one pack per video. I love it. Ken Knapsack ASMR. Type in ASMR baseball card, you'll find it. He freaking rules. I love it. Daniel S. has closed the window. I have screens on the windows. I don't know where they're coming from. Caleb says, Terry Pendleton. I thought his name was Jeff. Referring to the 85 Donruss error card. Card is freaking sweet. Card openings in nature. We're just meshing it all together here. Bob Brenly, Final pack in for Lee. You got Pete Rose in the center of that one. Guidry, who really should have been on the front of the box. Not Dave Rigetti. Kurt Ford, Ron Darling, and that lightning bug just really wants to partake <laughs> in this video. Look at that. Pat Carroll's Dan Quisenberry had to show up sooner or later. <laughs> Austin says, why don't you put a screen on? There's screens on all my windows. I don't know where he came from. Conseco Gold Cup, definitely an iconic one. Not his rookie, but second year card. His rookie card is obviously 86 traded. Ron Say and Steve Trout on the mound. Bobby Gritch. Bill Mooneyham showing off his pits. And Tom Herr. Tommy Herr. Canseco always follows Quisenberry. Nice Canseco Gold Cup for Lee. Alex says, remember catching lightning bugs in a jar when I was a kid. See, I have a horrible, horrible memory of when I was a kid. Uh, probably led me to the point of my beliefs and ideals today, but... There was at least one time where I went out in the backyard with a wiffle ball bat and I started hitting lightning bugs. And then I felt horribly bad about it once I realized that they were dying. Yeah, I was pretty messed up. and I never really gave my re forgave myself for it. But uh, probably shaped the person that I am today <laughs> from my regret from doing that. Back of the box, we got Ron Say and Cecil Cooper are those cards. And Mikey G, his first rip... Turn back the clock Tuesday, our first break with us. And the final stack of the box. Let's find something. TW Wrestling says, is that the only box you bought? This is the only one I'm ripping tonight. This is my last 87 Tops box. <laughs> Dane Les is killer. I know, I never forgave myself for it to this day. And I probably never will. Make sure you put the lightning bug in his sleeve for Criterion Racer. He flew off already. Weekend rips. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Joe's car crosses, and I was hit on the back by a wiffle ball bat trying to get that damn spider off. Yeah, we were in the fort that our dad built. It was all constructed out of wood. Our dad's like a master woodworker. But um, 
there was a spider, like some sort of spider that was actually hissing that attacked Joe. We were in the fort telling like ghost stories. I think it was like the Bell Witch or something like that, Joe. And out of nowhere, the spider just freaking assaulted Joe and crawled down his shirt. And he ran through the yard screaming while all the neighbors were out. It was just a random summer night, literally screaming and hollering. And we were hitting him with <laughs> we were hitting him with football ball bats to try to kill a spider. Bryn Smith, I don't think we'll ever forget that story. Sammy Khalifa. Joseph says, I have an 86 Tops box. Don't want to open it. Yeah, those boxes definitely spiked up. I remember getting boxes of those probably two years ago for like 15 bucks a piece. And now they're like 100 bucks. Bud Black. Frank DePino. There's Sid Bream and Tony Pena at Three Rivers Stadium. Pirates leaders cards. And there's Sandberg. A little late for Craig B, but still nice Sandberg there. Kent DeColve. Mike Trujillo. And then that pack out. First pack from Mikey G. Let's find you another one of these rookies. We found pretty much every one so far, minus the Barry Larkin. Paul else is who the hell would pay 100 bucks for 86 tops? People are doing it, man. People are definitely doing it. The boxes are being depleted because of savages like us that are tearing them all open. So they are they are up, they're getting up there, man, which is pretty wild because it's not a very good set. I love the set personally. I like the uh I like the um, the style of cards and the design, but overall, the best rookie card in there is probably like uh, you got Dykstra, Ozzie Keen, Harold Reynolds, Cecil Fielder, Budweiser sign in the background, kind of cut off, but still must make note of that. It's pretty sweet. Billy Sample, Clinton Ray, thanks, man. Terry Kennedy, super pissed on that card. <laughs> Craig McMurtry looks super dorky on that. Brian Downing, Templeton, and Otis Nixon, who never smiled a day in his life. I made that up, but uh, I somehow don't doubt it. Moving right along. Let's try to find ourselves another Barry Bonds error card. Somebody actually sold that on eBay for two grand. I don't know if they actually paid or not, but so it started that entire thing, which was absolutely ridiculous. Earl Hershiser, rookie card was in 85 tops. Jerry Willard, Danny Gladden went on to have a nice little mullet. John Cruck, rookie card, even though his true rookie or extended rookie is an 86 traded. That one is off-center, but at least he lost the disgusting sweat-stained hat and traded in for a helmet this time around. Fernando Valenzuela really rocked the 80s. <laughs> Who named their kid Oral? I know, that is so weird. I always wanted that, too. And look, look, look at that. Mikey G, you got the final rookie we were searching for. You can just tell already. There it is. There is Barry Larkin, rookie card. This one is pretty sharp looking too. Maybe off a tad bit. Top to bottom. Left to right looks pretty good. Very nice. Larkin Rookie. Love that card. I feel like I buy that every time I see it. I usually see it for pretty cheap in bargain boxes and stuff like that. But nice one to have in your rookie PC. Fake name. Rick Leach. And Dave Parker. Gourmet, what's happening, man? This is Mark McGuire, rookie card, making an appearance at the Mark McGuire Gold Cup. Actually, it wasn't, that wasn't a Gold Cup card, huh? Mark McGuire's first Major League Tops card. That's not showing up yet, man. Not yet. Conseco Gold Cup came out a little bit ago, and all the other rookies have now surfaced, but that, uh, that Big Mac has not come out yet. Actually, completely forgot to mention that in the beginning of the stream. Is McGuire's U.S. Olympic card is an 85 tops, but first major league tops cards in this set. Mike Schmidt. Looks like stiff as a board. Ken Herbeck, Tartable. Rookie card also an 86 trade. 86 trade is a freaking awesome set. There's Dave Forgetti. Steve Carlton, nice one there. Moose Haas. Yeah, I do like that McGuire a lot. Definitely is a good one to have in your PC. Five packs left in this break for Mikey G who I believe is still in here. Steve Trout on the back with the wax stain. So I'd say his box was not searched. Andre Dawson fell victim to the gum stain on that one. Unfortunately, Bob Kipper. <laughs> it just always looks so goofy. What a name, Moose Haas. Moose Haas, is, he's got quite an interesting background, though. He's like a freaking... Master Craftsman and a Black Belt and all this other stuff. I don't know if it says it on the back of that card, but we got to find out. His 88 score just fires off, just bragging about Moose Haas' accomplishments. Yeah, there you go. 
Moose is a black belt in Taekwondo. He is an amateur magician and certified locksmith. What is it that this, this guy cannot do? His 89, his 88 score go, does the exact same thing. It's just <laughs> the exact same credentials. Mikey G is in the house. What's up, man? Sammy Thunder says, we use the money for a possible renovation. Renovation, Happy to help. And it also says, funding for John's <laughs> grandma's basement renovation. Sammy Thunder, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. I definitely thought about that. Uh, I've been trying to buy a house for many, many years now, but I can't find anything that I like because I'm too picky and I'm just not good at making decisions like that. So, uh, But I always said, like, I at least want one of the rooms to have like wood paneling and make it like, I don't know, my toy room or something like that. I feel like it's it's necessary that I do that. Check out Sammy Thunder's channel. Give him a sub if you have not already. just posted a video a couple days ago. Fernando Valenzuela with the TM Mini Trio. Greg Swindell rookie card. How could we ever forget about that? I'll never forget when Joe Yankee, a.k.a. Joseph Baumgarten, sent me like at least nine of that card for an FMF years ago. Ken Griffey Sr., and there's Ripken, off-center, but Ripken all-star. Steve Trout just, I don't know. He looks creepy in that card. There is no escape from Greg Swindell ever or any of the Omens. Boom Slam, if you could post a link or Corey to Sammy Thunder's channel. Get some people over there. Check him out. Caleb's is nice. Steve Trout. Doc Gooden. They rock the 80s also. Pat Tabler. Or as I've called him, Tap Paddler. <laughs> I want to say in a recent video, Dwight Evans, Dennis Martinez, Gary Carter. So we really haven't seen a whole lot of repeats. Not too bad. Ken Phelps, really hiding his disguise. So we cannot ridicule him like we would in years to come. And Bruce Suter ends that pack out. Mickey Townsend looking stoned. He definitely did. Andrew Peace's best card in here, Bonds. Yeah, Bonds of Bo Jackson, I would say. Larkin rookie also. Floyd Fantian says, My Omens. Charlie Huff, Greg Olson, and Travis Demerit. Floyd fan, thank you for that, man. Those are some pretty awesome omens. I don't think Charlie Huff is on my omen list or even on the watch list. My omen list is pretty extensive. Paul L. has it all in the notes on his phone. I don't even know how many people are on there. You can probably tell us. Greg Olson, speaking of him, I thought that was going to be a Greg Olson there. Appreciate that, Floyd fan. Thank you, man. Travis DeMerit, we just sold one of his autographs, what, last auction. I think it sold for like a buck fifty. I was surprised it didn't go for more. But um, I honestly don't even know what he's doing this year. So based off of that, I'm sure that uh, it's probably not a good omen to have. It's Bob Walk for Joe's Card Corral. Mickey Hatcher, Keith Hernandez, Bobby Witt Sr., Tony La Russa, there's Gibby. I always like that card. I just like the contrast of it. So cool. George Frazier, Keith Atherton, was also very known for his dorky looks. And Greg Gross to end that pack out. Joe's Card Corral says, Wood paneling may as well make it super creepy like the seventh guest toy. <laughs> Joe's Card Corral, thank you for that. And thank you for that laugh and refer reference to um seventh guest, which I'm sure Paul and everybody else could tell you has been on my list of Things that I've wanted to make a video on for a very long time. And now with a reminder from Joe, we might have to do that soon. So chalk that up as coming soon. Seventh guest, Retro Game Night. Appreciate that, Joe's Card Corral. He posted a video last Friday. If you're not familiar with Joe from Joe's Card Corral, he's our childhood friend, Eric's and mine. Go give him a uh, sub. Check out his most recent video going through cards. Lots of early 90s football and whatnot. And some basketball. Excuse me, I want to take a break from our official sponsor. Unofficial sponsor, I should say, but hopefully soon to be official. There is nothing better. Maybe I see light, I don't know. Oddball Cards says, Rumors passes a live moves from Taco Bell to Chipotle. Sponsorship. <laughs> Sponsorship. Healthy options. Oddball Cards, Shane. Good to see you, man. Thank you very much for that. That, uh... That has not officially happened yet. I don't know if I could ever turn my back on Taco Bell, although I did not go there for until yesterday. I didn't go there for like four days in a row. And somebody actually mentioned to me about going to Chipotle, and I got I, I think I got kind of upset about it. It's, uh, it's kind of blasphemous around, around this area. Shane Allball Cards, appreciate that, man. Check him out. 
Boom Slang Corey, please post a link to his channel and uh, go give him a sub. There's Dale Murphy, Kurt Wilkerson, Curtis Wilkerson. Now I'm hungry for Taco Bell. Shane, blast you, man. Talk Gooden to go there immediately after this is over. Harold Baines and Denny Darwin. Henderson, his 82 tops, turn back the clock. Brewers leaders. Good to see you, Shane. It's been a little while. Final pack of the eve for Mikey G. So Larkin, rookies, and in his stack. We got Dave Winfield in the back of this one. Paul says, literally just told someone earlier that I know a guy who eats Taco Bell almost every day. Yeah, up until a few days ago, you could have taken the word almost out of there because I did eat it every single day. But I uh, went on a kind of a hiatus, and I went to the grocery store, and I started making dinner. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of overrated. So maybe I'll have to go back to Taco Bell tonight because I haven't gone today yet. Complete the trifecta. <laughs> As some of you guys are familiar with, Jerry Royster, Tom Lawless, Juan Augusto. The final pack for Mikey G. Jeff Russell, 12.44 p.m. in the background. Like that. Mike Heath, who also has an error card, 89 Fleer, which you will see tomorrow night. Doing an auction again. I am staying true to my word. Trying trying to, at least. And there will be another auction tomorrow. Approximately 8 p.m. A bunch of... There's vintage. I think there's going to be... Um, a Almost like near complete 80 top set. Kind of close to it, I guess. Corey Sunner Gold Cup. Um, and probably some other sports, too, I think. But everything starts at a buck. And starts at 8 p.m. Probably go to, like, 10. And, um... If you have cards that are being held for you, then shipping is free. And there's Dave Winfield to end the break. 87 tops. We finally broke the damn curse. We finally pulled the Bonds rookie card, Bo Jackson, from these packs. Been fighting that for a very long time now. So it is good to finally lay that to rest, and I will be able to sleep comfortably at last. But if you want to get yourself a box, 87 tops. About 50 or 60 bucks on eBay right now. Try to pull some of these iconic rookies. I appreciate you watching. The next break is going to be two weeks from now, and it will be 94 Don Russ. I have not opened those on this channel yet. I picked up two boxes over the weekend. So rip that. Looking for elites and insert cards, of course, and the special edition parallels. Hopefully they don't all uh, stick together like they are known for, but hope you'll join me tomorrow night for the auction. 8 p.m. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed already for more box breaks and card videos. And hit that thumbs up video if you enjoyed this one. Thank you, guys. I will hopefully see you all tomorrow night. Have a great rest of your night, everybody.